Well, welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with another video. This time I want to talk to you about Ironworks, the Earthrise Ironworks. Now, it's really cool what they've done with it. There's a lot of playability with it. It's an interesting figure. And yes, it took me forever to get to it because I had to find my own MicroMasters, my own G1s, because I want to do a comparison with them. All this fun stuff coming up. All right, so here he is in the packaging. I like these packaging shots because I like to inspect to see if anything's messed up like Will Jack missing part of his windshield. And there's the top and the side. Great artwork and looking forward to all of these wonderful things. RC, Quintesson, all that stuff is coming. And here is the back showing you all of the modes. Not actually all the modes, some of the modes. There it is. All right, so first off, let's have a look at this alt mode. And what this really is, is an homage to back in the day when we had Micro Masters and we had some sort of a grease pit and some other stuff, some airport or something. But uh, here is Ironworks. It looks pretty good. wonder if they're going to make an erector off of this. I mean, they probably will. Who knows? I, I don't know enough about Micro Masters. I'm going to be learning as I go when it comes to Micro Masters. Maybe refer to some of these other YouTubers that know a lot about it and get some information. But real quick, uh, his gun splits into two pieces and goes right here. This crane can go up and down on multiple different axes, axis size. This moves and the connectivity with this is pretty cool. We'll show you a little bit with that here in just a second. And so really not much more you can do with this thing other than connect a whole bunch of these and pretty much everything Earthrise can get connected together to one massive base, which is an awesome bit of playability, awesome display, not something I'm actually going to use it for. Here it is with a few Micro Masters on them, which again, I don't know much about Micro Masters and stuff, but I can see, like when the Micro Machine craze went on back in the 80s, I had absolutely nothing to do with it. I might have gotten one pack on Micro Machines or something, but none of the Transformers Micro Machines. But nowadays I can kind of appreciate it and they're kind of hitting that up. They already hit up some target masters and they already hit up some headmasters. So this is next. What's after this? Power masters. So here this is in comparison to a bunch of others. And I do want to point out a few things. Now, first of all, these little ramps are smaller and the actual unit itself is vastly smaller than the G1 unit. So it, it is not matched these at all. So it looks like like a little brother of all the other G1 ones. I think this one here is the next one they're actually going to make. And they got airplanes to go with it or something. Um, that's next on the list, I believe. So they'll remake this guy. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with it. But yeah, this is kind of what it looks like uh, and kind of what it would look like when we get all of the modern ones remade and then some MicroMasters thrown in it. Here's how he scales next to hoist. And the reason I'm going to do a hoist comparison, if I transform them all up and then there'll be a whole lot of fun there transform up hoist but you can uh, connect once he's transformed to hoist you can connect these components here and haul each other away so there's that connectivity and hoist will haul them away okay so let's go ahead and get this guy transformed up now he is a uh, parts former and he's I guess they call it a weaponizer kind of deal but we're going to separate these components here and get him moved into another mode. He has another mode, so let's get into all of that fun and enjoyment. So we're going to start, let's get this adjusted down, by opening both of these up and then What's gonna happen is you want to connect this on, yeah, that side. And then you want to line this up. So we have the big piece here and a big piece, a big opening there and a big opening there. And then this is gonna snap in. And we got this guy here, it's going to, Snap in this way. Guess it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to hook up 
the crane. Like so. Go in there, crane. And then put the gun together, which is pretty simple. And plug that in right here. We can push that to the back. And then we're gonna have to plug this piece here in on the top. So let's move this up. You need to lift this down, lift this up, and then plug this in with the pegs going to the side so that you can attach the uh, windmill that's not included and you have to buy a third party upgrade kit. And that was ridiculously tight. Okay, anyway, so getting it in like that, there he is in his sort of an attack base mode, I guess is what they're calling this thing. And it's okay. It's uh, an homage to G1. I mean, so we had this in G1 and it's, it's okay. Uh, there is an upgrade kit. So the upgrade kit is available for it. And so with this upgrade kit, you can put a windmill on it and add a missile to it and stuff. So uh, they should have included that, I think, the windmill. If, that's what, if it came with G1, like why did they not include it? Why did they leave it out? I know they did a whole lot more functionality with this, but I don't see why they didn't do all of it, go all of the way. This mode compared to some others, uh, leader slash Voyager, Voyager, uh, big deluxe. There it is. All right, so let's get this guy broken back down. With that really tight connection. And we'll start turning him into a robot. Pretty simple stuff. It actually is kind of confusing at first. So like when you first mess with this figure and you say, where does everything go? It's confusing. But after a couple of times, uh, it sort of makes sense. So I almost would like to put these on the outside. I would, uh, you know, it's this funky stuff. I'd like to put that on the outside. That would be cool. But or on the inside, you know, because you could swap them. But anyway, we're going to do it the official way and then we'll see what a, another way would look here in just a second. So you put the legs on and we need to snap some stuff into place here. Uh, we're going to take this torso piece, lift his head up, flip it around, and then this turns into his chest piece. We lower that piece and then the chest plugs in and it's like a double plug. It's pretty good. There we go. And then he, he really has one arm. He's got an arm and a crane. So let's unconnect all that. Fold his shoulder over and then his hand is just molded. We're going to get that plugged in here real quick. With his crane piece, we need to make sure everything is in the right configuration. And this goes on his back, like so. I guess it doesn't really matter which one. There's two holes, two ports. Then he's got his gun right here. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at him. So let's take a look at this guy. First of all, I want to say he does have quite a bit of paint on him, like this yellow glistening paint. That's a lot. Like, that's laid on thick. And you have his head sculpt here. Looks okay. I don't know what it's supposed to look like. He's not supposed to have a head sculpt. This has never had a bot mode. So that's what's significant about this. Like shiny reflective paint right here. Paint uh, that's tampographed on Autobot symbol, which is beautiful. Uh, down below we got some red paint down there. Looking at the back, his, his knees are kind of weak, but I'm sure because we, we have to move it around so much, that's kind of how he looks in the back. Pretty clean. Uh, actually pretty clean, just a little bit of uh, opening there, which is not the end of the world. Real quick before we do anything else, I do want to show you what he would look like if you swap the legs. It's a possibility. I mean, I think it might look a little bit better, but the problem is it uh, doesn't really pose very well. That's why they have it on the outside. This just gets in the way when you're moving around. So I guess you really can't do it that way. Now for his gun, 
you can do a few things with this gun. First off, you can split it into two, and it does have a lot of paint on it. Uh, it looks pretty good. You could put maybe one right here, and then uh, look at your shoulder. You can, uh, uh, you can, I was saying, you can extend his shoulders just a little bit and make them wider if that's something you wanted to do, make them look beefier. And then you could maybe put the other gun over on this port so he doesn't have to hold a gun. You can have a hand free for something else. And then, of course, we got to see blast effects, dude. The last effects fit on there and look okay. Yeah, yeah, that works. That works for me. Those ability on this guy got his arm. Uh, well, head does a little bit because of the transformation. Shoulder, all the way around. Uh, Ninety, elbow, double elbow for transformation. Of course, no hand articulation whatsoever. So that's a challenge. Does have waist rotation. 90 to the front, not all the way to the back because of the connector piece there. Does a sort of a double jointed knee, it seems. And no, let's see, does it have no ankle rocker? So really the thing is, this isn't even a bot. It's like the first bot mode of this guy from my understanding. And so not bad. All right, so here he is next to Hoist and Optimus Prime. And I do have to admit that Optimus Prime... Uh, <laughs> I always love looking at his chest there. But if you look at this, you can see he is shorter than the other Deluxe. But this guy's a bigger than average Deluxe. And definitely shorter than a Voyager slash leader. But really, there's no scale to go by because there's no robot mode. Let's go ahead and bring in another Voyager here. We got Starscream holding Target Master. And yeah, I mean, he I guess he fits. So this is the Earthrise version of Ironworks. Definitely a cool addition. Definitely something different. I really like this. It, it gets me excited about fast tracks that's coming and the things that you can do with that. Kind of reminds me a little bit or maybe a lot of COG and Six Gun. So really a cool looking figure. I don't know what more they could have done with this because they did quite a bit with it. And for a $20 price point, I'm pretty impressed. Let me know what you think of this guy. Like, subscribe, turn to your hanger. Out.